Good morning once again from Beckman Catholic. We've got an update for you this morning. Uh, this update is going to talk about what our plans are moving forward um, from the governor's press conference in terms of education for the next few weeks. So uh, if you haven't watched these lately, please be sure to pay close attention to this one. And if you know of folks that haven't been watching, please make sure that they take a look at this one today. So a little bit about what's been happening in the state over the weekend. The latest news from yesterday, um, just under 900 confirmed cases with just under 10,000 negative cases. The governor and public health officials continue to remind everyone to limit our travel to essential items, practice good hygiene, and to continue practicing social distancing. That social distancing is a key piece and it's probably one of the hardest ones to do. Most of us are social beings in nature and we like to be with people um, and to interact with them. But the more we interact with folks outside of our home, the, the greater chance it is for virus to spread if somebody has, has the virus, doesn't know it, or is positive and, and carries it along. So it's really important that we limit our interactions with other people uh, to the greatest extent possible. Last Thursday, the governor announced that schools would be closed through the 30th of April. And at that press conference, they talked about different options that schools could utilize moving forward. Um, we consulted with the Archdiocesan Office of Catholic Schools and received some guidance and information from them. The high schools at the, uh, the high schools in the Archdiocese also met last week to talk about what they were looking at for plans. And then we've met with our faculty and staff and we also presented information to the Board of Education on how best to proceed moving forward with the options that were provided. Based on that information, the board did approve that starting on April 15th, we'll move to required education for all students in grades seven through 12. So that means moving forward, students will be required to be working on schoolwork starting next Wednesday. Part of the reason we looked at C-term classes was that was to help us prepare for the additional possibility of closures. It would give our students and our teachers the opportunity to work on some online learning options, to get comfortable and familiar a little bit with what those look like and how they operate, so that if we did move in this direction, we were better prepared to do so. So with that change, this was supposed to be the last week of C-term classes. We have given staff the uh, option if they'd like so that they can prepare for these required courses coming up next week that they can wrap up their C-term classes here shortly. So that'll vary from instructor to instructor for those of you in those C-term classes. So be on the lookout for information from those teachers. So you're probably asking how classes will work. Well, we're gonna be looking at um, an online approach which is asynchronous, which means you do not have to be on at the same time as your teacher. So asynchronous means not at the same time. Um, so what that means is we'll be looking to set due dates or activities out that you'll have time to complete. Um, you'll receive somewhere between students two to three activities or assignments per week to complete. So it could be you get something on Wednesday that is due by Monday. Um, and those dates will obviously vary instructor to instructor. But the idea is, is it won't be due something right away. You'll have time to complete those so that we know that many of you have other things that are going on right now and you can work school around those, those schedules to, for a little bit more flexibility. If you're in an elective course like art or ag structures, um, band, choir, and some of those, they may be looking at a project-based approach for this time period rather than that you'll have multiple assignments to do. And that, so your instructors and teachers will let you know how those things will work. <clears throat> we are gonna be using email as our primary method of communication. Um, I've often heard from younger folks that email is for old people. Um, however, email is the way that most businesses as well as college and universities send out information. It allows, email allows for a message to go out at the same time to all people and you can track back and forth to see what's there. So students, if you're not used to using your email, we're gonna ask you to make that change and get used to using your email and checking it at least a couple times a day while we start this process. Uh, that's where updates will be sent out. That's the best way to communicate back and forth with your teachers. So speaking of that, if you send a, a message to the teachers, the expectation that we've set is that they'll respond within 24 hours of the receiving that during the school week. So that's Monday through Friday. If you send them uh, an email over the weekend on Friday night, during Saturday afternoon, um, the expectation is you'll get that back sometime on Monday. In regards to assignments, Assignments will be returned within one week of the due date with feedback. And then we also are asking teachers right now to be available via Zoom or Google Meets. 
a minimum of two times each week for at least an hour each of those times to answer questions and to work with students. The teachers will set those up and uh, communicate those times with each with their students that they have in their classes. So another question you may be asking is, I didn't pick up some stuff from school because when we started this back in mid-March, we said just to grab your Chromebooks. We are aware of that and this is the change. And so we'll do an additional material pickup for you prior to the April 15th. Um, in today's message, you can see that there's a Google form with the link below. We'll make sure that that's in the email that goes out as well. We're asking that if you need stuff from your locker, or need stuff from the building, again, academic related, not your PE stuff, but if you have your academic pieces that you need, maybe it's a textbook, um, maybe it's an, another book, um, it could be a band instrument, that you fill out the form. Uh, the form will ask for your name, grade, locker number, if you remember it, and then the items that you need, and if there's some specific instructions you need to give us, um, they'll be there. We as school staff will be taking care of getting these items from your locker, We'll have them up towards the front of the building so when we do schedule the pickup dates and times, um, things will be right here so you can come in, grab it, and go. Um, some teachers are going to be asking students to come pick up materials needed for class. It could be a textbook, it might be a novel, it could be packets or other information. Um, so students, watch for that information from your teachers. We're also going to try to work to compile that list and send it out. Um, for parents so that you have that as well to know what items they'll need to be picked up when we have that pickup day. You might be asking what about connectivity issues? We know um, that the internet will might not allow some folks to access items or you may not have internet access. We will come up with alternative methods for you to be able to pick up items or to access class materials. So if you have those concerns, please let me or Mr. Deverex know and we will try to work through those uh, in the next seven to 10 days so that when we start on, in, on April 15th, we're ready to go with that. We also know that there could be some circumstances that emerge. Um, obviously, this is happening because of illness, um, it, that if someone becomes sick, that could be an issue um, or you, something could happen at home. If you've got concerns, please let us know. Um, we will work with you as best we can through these situations. What if you have other questions? Because we probably haven't covered everything here. I'm gonna be doing a live Q&A on Zoom tomorrow on April 7th at noon to answer questions. We'll probably simulcast that as well on Facebook Live. Um, we'll record the session and we'll post it for viewing. So if you can't make it at noon tomorrow, you can watch that at a later time. If you have questions now that you would like to, to send in, you can send those to my email mkelkutsky at beckmancatholic.org. We will start with those questions and then see the ones that come through the, through the session. Um, and then the Zoom link is down there below and we'll include this information in the email that we send out. So again, tomorrow, Tuesday at noon, we'll do a live Q&A to try to answer questions if you have them based on um, the information we've just provided. So I just wanna reiterate and, and stress that this is a learning curve for everyone. Some of us um, and some of you have done some online learning before, um, but this is a new concept for many people. Um, it's going to have some hiccups. Things aren't necessarily gonna work as perfectly as we want them to. It's gonna require some patience and flexibility and understanding from everyone. So we appreciate um, your willingness to give this a try. And again, your patience and understanding and flexibility as we move forward with this option. Couple other things to pass along today. First one is STO. First off, a reminder that round one applications are due next Wednesday. Um, there was some discussions and some investigation to see if some changes for tax information could occur. Um, it actually will cause more work and make things more complicated. So the STO board is still requiring 2019 tax information to finalize your applications. There will be a second round of STO applications on July 15th and the STO folks are trying to look at how they can allocate the funds to make sure that uh, things are as, as good as possible if you hit the second date. Normally the awards on round two are less than the round one awards. Um, so we still encourage you to get round one. If you can get your information in by next Wednesday, that would be great. Um, if you have questions on STO applications, please call the office. We will help you as best we can or direct you to resources to help you as you fill those out. But again, round one applications are still due next Friday, next Wednesday, April 15th. AP updates for students in AP classes. There was information released on Friday regarding changes to the testing process, which include testing dates, times, and costs. 
Um, you can visit the College Board's update to get more information on that. That's apcoronavirusupdates.collegeboard.org. And all that information is listed there for you as well. And I know that some of your teachers have been sending that out for you also. Driver's education. Uh, Mr. Halkowski, who's the current NICC instructor, did send an email to students and families last Friday. Uh, if you missed that email and you are in that February class, he is still postponing the last two face-to-face -face class, class sessions in the hopes that those can be done at the beginning of May. Also, just a reminder that uh, the 30-day requirement for having the behind the wheel done with the course has been waived due to the circumstances. And so if you have drive time left, we will be able to get that in uh, once that once these classes get back up and running. In regards to activities, um, the activity associations in Iowa basically have said as long as school is not in session, activities won't be in session. So they've extended out those postponements of activities now through April 30th. Um, at this point, spring activities are still slated to resume when school's back in session. As to what that will look like, we'll know more once we've got a firm return date. Uh, prom and senior events as well. So one of the questions that came up last week um, already that I had um, on Thursday when, when the governor's information came out about April 30th was, well, prom was supposed to be at the end of April and now that date falls within there. So currently prom is postponed due to the change um, in the school return date. If we're looking at the calendar to try to figure out if we can uh, come with an alternate date and as soon as we have something worked out, we'll, set, we'll send out information on that. So please know we are looking at this point to reschedule prom if possible. Seniors and your parents, um, we still intend to have senior awards, baccalaureate and graduation. We've changed a couple of those dates um, already for senior awards in particular, uh, based on what we have. Um, if there are further changes to the calendar, it's still our intent to have these items. Um, and my preference is to do them face to face. So if we can make that work, we're going to make that work somehow or some way. Um, but senior families will send out a letter to you sometime within the next week that kind of goes over these items. We usually send that out at this time of year, so we still want to continue to do that. And so you'll get that information about dates and times and expectations um, for senior activities that are coming up through the rest of the year. Again, that'll come out sometime later this week. With that, let's do closing prayer today. Um, I do have a, a prayer for Our Lady of Perpetual Help that we'll pray today. So please join me in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Queen of the angels and mother of the Americas, we turn to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you are truly our compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your son, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you for joining with us today. Um, we thank you for your continued support of Beckman Catholic. And um, we ask for your prayers as we move forward with this new endeavor. Thank you.